All right, now that we've discussed what happens during the light reactions, the next step is the Calvin cycle. The goal of the Calvin cycle is to build sugar from smaller molecules. Okay, so we're taking carbon dioxide, putting them together to build sugar. And this consumes energy to do so, so it requires an input of ATP. Um, now for how does it work? The carbon is going to enter the Calvin cycle in the form of carbon dioxide, and it's going to leave in the form of a 3-carbon sugar called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, or G3, G3P. Um, it's going to consume ATP in the process, and it removes electrons from NADPH. So it removes electrons from NADPH and adds them um, to carbon dioxide to make the sugar. So it's going to take electrons and hydrogens from NADPH, add them to the carbon dioxide to make sugar. The Calvin cycle has three phases. The first phase is carbon fixation. During carbon fixation, ribulose biphosphate carboxylase, remember ACE means it's an enzyme, so ribulose biphosphate um, carboxylase, also known as Rubisco, helps to transfer, or transfer a molecule of carbon dioxide. It moves carbon dioxide onto a molecule of ribulose biphosphate. Now, ribulose biphosphate is known as um, RUBP, um, so, or RUBP. RUBP um, has five carbons, so when you add RUBP to carbon dioxide, which has one carbon, you get a six um, carbon intermediate. So, by bifos ribulose biphosphate carboxylase, or Rubisco, adds carbon dioxide onto RUBP. And that's our first phase. Now, our second phase is reduction. During reduction, ATP and NADPH are used to rearrange um, that intermediate where we've added carbon dioxide to RUBP. We use energy to rearrange it into glyceraldehyde 3, by, um, 3 phosphate, which is known as um, G3P. Okay? G3P is also known as PGAL as well. Okay? It's a three carbon sugar. Um, and then our third phase is regeneration. We have to regenerate our RUBP um, so that we can redo our Calvin cycle. So during regeneration, ATP is used to reconstitute um, RUBP from G3P. So again, during our first phase, we're making some sort of intermediate okay, that's um, a result of adding carbon dioxide to RUBP. And Rubisco is the enzyme that helps that to happen. So it requires an input of carbon dioxide. So three carbon dioxide are going to be inputted one at a time. Okay, so we get some sort of intermediate. Okay, and then we're going to use energy and NADPH to, um, to add or to rearrange everything again into G3P. Okay, once we have our G3P, we actually make six of them. Um, once we make our G3P, we're going to release one as an output, and then our other five G3P are going to be rearranged with an input of energy into making um, three molecules of RUBP so that we can redo our, carbon, our, our, redo our Calvin cycle. So you might be wondering, where's the sugar? So in order to get one G3P as a product of the Calvin cycle, three molecules of carbon dioxide must be joined to three molecules of RUBP. So for every G3P we make, we have to input three molecules of CO2 and three molecules of RUBP. This makes six molecules of G3P, so we make six, G, um, six G3P through the process of ca the Calvin cycle, but only one is a net product. The other five are used to regenerate three molecules of RUBP. So we take those other five, we use energy to rearrange them back into RUBP so we can do the Calvin cycle again. G3P is a sugar building block. Okay, it is a, um, If we take two G3P, so they each have uh, three carbons in them, if we take two of them, we can make a six carbon sugar. If we take a lot of G3P and put them together, we can make many different types of sugar, many different polysaccharides. Now, a fun fact, the Calvin cycle is named for Melvin Calvin. He discovered the Calvin cycle, or how it works, by using radioactive carbon-14 to trace the path of carbon dioxide through the cycle. He received a Nobel Prize for it in 1961. Um, it's also, or this cycle is also known as carbon fixation. So instead of saying the Calvin, Calvin cycle, we can just call it carbon fixation. We're fixing CO2, fixing carbon into G3P or sugar. But we never, ever, ever call it the dark reactions because it doesn't, although it doesn't require light, it doesn't necessarily happen in the dark. Finally, let's do an overview of what we put in the Calvin cycle and what we get out of the Calvin cycle. We input three carbon dioxide per turn of the Calvin cycle, so per G3P. 
We also have to use 9 ATP. Um, that energy is used to rearrange our carbons. Um, and then we use 6 NAD pHs. We use that to get our hydrogens to add on our CO2s to make sugar. Our outputs are 1 G3P, 9 ADP and inorganic phosphates because we're breaking down those ATP to get energy to power the cycle. So we're breaking it down back into ADP. And we also have 6 NAD P's, okay, because we've taken the hydrogen off of them and added them onto the carbon to make our G3P or P gal.